Hello, it's Keith here and this is Lesson 12 of the Simple series of my Z80 programming tutorials. In this series we do something very basic on each of our systems and the intent of this is we have a single assembly file that you can then use as a template for your own work. Today we're going to create a simple keyboard re reading routine which will read in the input of the user and then will move a smiley face around the screen. The smiley face routine is based on the bitmap example from before, so we're going to look at how to basically activate that and allow it to move around. The idea being that you could use this as a template for a game later on, maybe add a second player in the same way and have two players battling, maybe one would be CPU controlled, whatever you want really. But if you've got a graphics drawing routine and a keyboard input routine, you've essentially got the starting point for you to create your own game. So let's start off by actually seeing today's example in action. So here's today's code running. You can see we've got our smiley face. And if I use QA, O and P, I can move left, up, right and down. And you can see if I hold up here, I can't go off the screen. We're doing some boundary checking there so that the game will allow for you to easily move around the screen, but not have any problems with going off the screen. Because if you're drawing off the screen, you would corrupt your system memory. So let's see the code. The code starts at hexadecimal 8000. If you don't know how to create a tape file or a disk file and run your own code, please take a look at the Hello World example I did in the past. This is an extension of that, and I'm not going to cover the code that was created in the Hello World example or the bitmap drawing example because I've gone over that before and there was a lot of stuff I went into there. I don't want to go over it again. Now, the first thing we do in this example is we clear the screen. The way we do this, the screen memory is at hexadecimal 4000. We write the address 4000 to 255, filling all the pixels to black, and then we copy from that HL address 4000 to 4001 in the destination, and we do hexadecimal 1800 bytes, the full size of the screen, and we do an LDIR. Now, because the destination is one byte after the source, we're effectively copying that 255 across the entire range. Next, what we do is we load the accumulator with a zero and jump to start draw. Now, this skips over the keyboard reading routine. The reason we're doing this is we only update the screen when the user presses a key. If we didn't skip over this the first time, we would effectively never draw the player the first time until the user pressed a key. That would mean the user wouldn't be able to see their player. So that's not what we want. So we're skipping over here and jumping into the start draw. Here's the keyboard reading routine. We're using the firmware in this case. Now, I know I say I don't like the firmware. I don't like the firmware, but the idea of this series is not what I like. It's about what is easiest for you to get started. And in this case, the easiest way to read the keyboard is to rely on the firmware. The firmware writes the last key press to 5COH every tick. So as long as you've got interrupts enabled, which we haven't disabled them, so they are, 5COH will be the keyboard presses. And that's what we're using in this case. So. We use a pair of variables here, x and y, to store the current player position, and there's a backup of those in x2 and y2 here. So we need to have these and we have to update them. The backup one is used for clearing the old sprite and also for bouncing the player back onto the screen if they're going out of boundaries. So the first thing we do is we back up our x and y position into x2 and y2, and we're setting bc to the current player position. Now we're running blank player. This is a modified version of the sprite routine we looked at before in this series. Blank sprite is just a blank sprite and test sprite is the smiley face. So we're using our drawing routine with the blank sprite just to clear out the last position of the player here. And then we're going into restoring the key press that we read in and we're comparing to the key presses. So we're testing against Q and A for up and down, O and P for left and right. And in each case, we're jumping over the next command if the key isn't pressed and the commands are moving the x and y positions up down left and right across the screen so eight pixels up or down for the up and down buttons one byte left and right to give it an even eight by eight movement which is going to be most appropriate for a simple spectrum game when we get to this point we've updated our player position so we are storing the new position in x and y here and then what we're doing is we are checking the boundaries now, if we go over the top or the left of the screen, which is the top left corner is 0, 0, we will wrap around the byte. So going left of the bottom left would actually set the X position to 255 and going off the top of the screen would set the Y position to 255. So ironically, we only need to check the maximum boundary and not the minimum one to make sure we're still on the screen. And that's what we're doing here. The screen is 32 bytes wide, so we check our X position against 32 and we're going to jump to 
a player reset function if they're over that boundary. And we check for 192 because the screen is 192 lines tall. If the player's position is okay, we jump down here. If it's not, then we restore the player's position from those backups we took earlier just up here. Now we're ready to draw the player. So we use the draw player function, which is just our smiley face routine that we saw in the bitmap simple example before. Now we clear the key press buffer so that next time when we compare to zero, if it's still zero, then we know the user hasn't pressed a key. We do a little pause with the simple pause loop and then we jump all the way back up here and we repeat. And that's all there is to it. It's very straightforward to get this little smiley face onto the screen. Now, of course, this isn't really anything particularly impressive. If you wanted to extend it, you could add um, Kempson Joystick. I covered the Kempson Joystick in the Platform Specific series, so that's something you could look at. As I say, the idea is that you use this in some way, maybe add more sprite routines for a computer control player, or you could add two-player support if you wanted. But hopefully this is enough for you to start taking a game of your own idea and building something of your own with this as a very simple example of how to read from the keyboard and how to get your game graphics onto the screen. Anyway, that's it for today's lesson. I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching and goodbye. If you enjoyed today's video, please check out my new YouTube channel known as Chibi Ackerman's Live. This is going to be a live streaming channel and it's going to be um, some more casual content. It will be me streaming some of my programming sessions, me playing games and chatting along. Um, I'm going to try and really do a lot of technical content in there, try and explain things as I'm playing games, you know, talking about the hardware or while I'm programming. And also I'm going to try and interact with the chat a lot. So if you really enjoyed today's lesson, then maybe you want more content and that will give it you. Equally, if you didn't enjoy today's lesson, if it was too hard for you, if you found it um, confusing and you want something a bit lighter hearted, then it might be interesting to you as well. Though I guess you've probably already clicked off if you didn't enjoy it because 95% of my viewers give up after about two minutes. But either way, thanks for watching and goodbye.